Hi, title of this presentation is Optimizing Travel Time Between North Carolina High School Football Playoff Teams Using an OD Matrix. This is part of a presentation that we gave at the CDAG conference in 2014. My name is Timothy Mulroney. I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Environmental, Earth, and Geospatial Sciences at North Carolina Central University. And the idea for this was from a graduate student named Carrie Bacon, who's a local high school football coach, who wanted to address this issue on ways that we can organize the way that the North Carolina High School Athletic Association playoff football players are, are determined. Now, our background here it talks about the playoffs and the high school, in particular, the high school football playoffs, and they have eight separate postseason football championships. Each class championships, they have 4A, 3A, 2A, and 1A, they based on grade 9 through 12 enrollment. And you can see down below the classifications here for what a 4A school is, 3A, 2A, and 1A. And these are visited, I think, every four years or so. So for your 4A, the enrollment is about 1,411 up to 2,833, 999 to 1,410. So as you can imagine, schools that are growing, they might grow into one, while schools that are losing or not gaining population as quickly might go downgrade into another class because they try to keep the sizes of these classes about the same. And I think for 4A, there's for each of the classes, there's a little bit more than 100 schools for each one. Now for each, for football, for each class championship, the top 64 teams are selected to, are selected for the postseason. And you can see an example here of the 3A schools. So this is a list of the 3A schools here. You can see the school that my kids go to here is 1,382 in a growing area. So they might be 4A at the next um, reclassification, which I think occurs in 2017. Now, the 32 of those 64 schools for each class, the 32 largest compete for the AA championship and the rest for the single A championship. So we have a four double A championship, which is a 32 team bracket where they compete in five rounds. And then there's a four A championship. And then there's a three double A and then a three A, a two double A and a two A, a one double A and a one A. So from the more than 400 schools that qualify, you know, that participate in football, we're only gonna have eight champions. Now it can be a little bit difficult because you're Teams can change both your bracket and your region every year. So if a team's on the border within its class, they might be double A one year and single A another year. And we can see an example here. Durham Riverside, they're in the four double A, while Durham Hillside, where Kerry coaches, is in the four A championship. And then also each region is seeded one through 16. So basically when we create these regions, we create an east and a west region based on a meridian. And we'll talk about that problem with the meridian, this line of longitude that we have. So teams in the center of the state, they can change both region, the east and west, as well as their bracket A or 2A or single A based on their enrollment and their location. And you can see an example here. For 2013, this is the test bed that we use. This is the 4AA bracket. Now, 4AA are your largest school, so you can see they're constant, mainly concentrated around the Charlotte area, Greensboro, Winston-Salem, Raleigh, Durham, Fayetteville, and then we've got one out in Wilmington. We might have one school out in, out in um, the Asheville area, but they didn't qualify this particular year, going out towards the Asheville area, but they didn't qualify. So these are the qualifiers. And you can see we just drew this meridian here that separated the east region from the west region. And furthermore, we divided these into quadrants. So these red teams, these eight red teams compete against each other, and the winner of those eight teams compete against the winner of these eight teams in green. Same thing with these purples. Okay, and we use the term quadrant to divide these 32 teams into four quadrants of eight teams, basically. And you can see Pinecrest competes all the way up here with the teams in Raleigh as well as the team in Wilmington here. And they're seeded one through 16, and there's slight adjustments based on proximity. So teams from in the first round, teams from Charlotte might not be going all the way up, or they try to minimize the number of times that teams from Charlotte might have to go up to Greensboro, so they might compete locally or whatnot, and then compete against the, the other teams as you get further and further along. And you can see this meridian here, so if we had an extra team qualify out in this direction, we might have Richmond Central kind of, you know, Richmond Senior thrown into this east region if 
another one of these schools doesn't qualify. So as you can imagine, these teams in the middle kind of change regions. You can see the two AA teams here. So two AA teams, these are smaller schools. They're spread throughout the state. And you can see the dividing line right here. It's over here at the Greens, um, Guilford County, Forsyth County line here, where we have um, Andrews and Randleman, which are going to be in the east region, while these teams in green and red are going to be in our west region here. So you can see this dividing line or this meridian is a lot different for your different classifications of schools. And this just shows the west region right here with a couple teams from the east region. So this is a map that shows these here. And you can see this meridian that I've drawn right here where they separate the east and west region. Now, the one problem is this. First of all, the regions are predetermined by this meridian. So there's 16 teams in each region. And the problem that Kerry wanted to look at is what is the best way to group these 16 teams into two groups of eight so that the drive time between them is minimized. And then the winner of these quadrants play in the regional final that determine our state final matchup. And this can be very problematic in smaller divisions where the drive time to schools is very high. You know, the east-west extent of North Carolina is almost 500 miles. So, and a lot of these 1A schools are located at the periphery of the state. So for the larger schools, this isn't as much a problem as it is for the smaller, smaller school, you know, the 2A and the 1A schools where resources are a lot more uh, difficult to come by. So you can see my quadrants right here. Okay. And like I showed before, I have my quadrants right here for my four AA schools. And you can see the longest travel time here in this particular quadrant here is 2 hours and 22 minutes. In this particular quadrant right here, it's 2 hours and 6 minutes, which isn't all that bad. As we start to look at the two AA schools, it gets to be a little bit more problematic. You can see from North Brunswick all the way up to Andrews outside in High Point, it's almost a four-hour drive just for these eight teams that compete against each other just to go to the regional final. And then you can see for this other region here, you, it's uh, from East Duplin up to Curatuck, it's three hours and 32 minutes. And you can see that I superimposed my major highways and interstates on top of this, so you can see the types of roads that these teams have to travel along. I would imagine for this one, they're gonna travel along 40 for the most part here. So I wanted to solve this using a GIS. And using a GIS, I can create an OD matrix that shows the drive time between the 16 teams in each region using the Network Analyst Extension in ArcGIS. And then I can use statistical programming tools that can find two groups of eight whose the sum of the driving times has been minimized because I don't know which team is going to win in the next round. So I want to just ensure that the drive time has been minimized compared to all the different combinations that we can have. Now, the first thing that I did here was I created an OD matrix, and I had to get the locations of all schools. And I had to look up the, you know, I had to go to the NCHSAA website, get the names of all the schools. And I'm very lucky that nc1map.com has an updated list of all high schools. So I had to actually go through and query out all 32 high schools in each of the classifications or each of the tournaments, the eight tournaments that we had. And that, that, data development probably was the biggest part and I just had also had to associate those with a network so I got the NC NCDOT roads database that has speed limit attached to it so I used network analyst to create an OD matrix to do this now in ArcGIS when I run my OD matrix this is what it looks like it says from Ash County High to Ash County High is obviously going to be zero and this is the total drive time in minutes that's what I care about and that's what most people are going to care about the most not Euclidean distance, not even driving distance along this network. And I'm lucky that we have attribution in, NC, in the NCDOT data that's able to do this. So I combined data from the NCDOT with NC1Map that showed me the locations of these high schools right here so that I can form a network between those. Now, this is very difficult to look like. I want to create a matrix, and ArcGIS gives me this matrix. So I brought this into Excel and ran a little VB function that gave me this particular matrix right here that I can manipulate in a statistical programming language. And the one that I used is R. And you can see right here, I have a 16 by 16 just for this particular uh, region here that we're looking at here. And I think this is the 2A in the West region. So this matrix is pretty familiar. You can see this is reflective about this little axis right here. 
so I can bring this into my statistical programming. Now, what I did, and I'm not much of a combinatrix person or statistical programmer, I just used the brute, mate, uh, brute force method. And then for each region, I just wanted to find the average drive time between eight teams and its eight complements. And I just wanted to add those up. And if the sum was, a, sum was a minimum, I wanted to keep the two groups of eight teams and the eight teams and their complements. And I had to repeat this for all eight combinations. So as you can imagine, I went through this, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I found the average drive time was 92. And then I went, let, went for the complement, the other, the other teams that I have right there, 150. I went to the next one. This was 80 and 147. And I just went through all these different combinations. So once I found this one was good, but once I got to 80 and 147, this sum was less than this sum, so I deleted it. And this one was good. Well, let me go to my next combination here. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 11, 12. And I did this using nested loops. And this was 84 and 153. And as you notice, this one eliminated. And I just did this 6,435 times. So as you can imagine, it got a little bit ugly quickly. And when I did this, these are the regions that it gave me. You can see this cluster here of eight teams around Charlotte. Now, it's a little difficult because there's 10 teams that qualified this year. So what are the two teams that are going to get eliminated? You can see over here, I've got my eight teams here in Raleigh and Durham, and then in Southern Raleigh. Then we've got Pinecrest, our two faithful schools, and our Wilmington school. So this is how it divided up based on driving time. Now, the one problem you see here is Richmond has to go all the way to the other side of Charlotte. Instead of competing on this side of Charlotte, it has to go all the way to the other side because we this drive time here has been a minimum has been uh, minimized so much that when we add up this very small minimum and any other group of schools it's going to be smaller than any other combination and that's a, a little bit of a problem okay, and i looked at ways to address this so just based solely on drive time these are the two regions that i have based solely on drive time so the average drive time between these green schools is 65 minutes for the red schools it's 21 for these purple schools, it's only 20 minutes. And for these other brown schools, it's about 63 minutes, a little bit more than an hour. Now, we have an outlier problem that we saw before where that Richmond Senior had to go to the, all the way to the other side of Charlotte. So I wanted to scale the drive time for each of the eight groups by the standard deviation of the eight candidates. So I, in addition to the average drive time between those, I want to, I just use the multiplier for the standard deviation. Since it's unitless and we have an average, I kind of thought we, we wouldn't really have a, a unit disagreement with this. There might be better ways to do this. And from there, I wanted to add up the product of the drive time times the standard deviation for all of these to look for a minimum among those permutation. So I ran this 6,435 different combinations instead of looking at average. I looked at average time standard deviation for each of the groups. And these are the results that I got. Now Richmond Senior is grouped with the two schools on the eastern side of Charlotte, as well as the other five schools from the Greensboro and Winston-Salem area. And when I look at this, the average drive time is a little bit more at 68 minutes. And for the red schools, it's a little bit more at 27 minutes. But we don't have that outlier that we've discussed before. And then you can see for the other groups of schools, it stays exactly the same, where this outlier wasn't a problem. You can see here for the two AA schools, this is in the west region here, my average drive time for the red schools is an hour and 54. For the green is an hour and 13. And you can see how they're just interspersed between all of them there. And now when I optimize there for the green schools, it's an hour and 59. But for these reds, it's only 51 minutes. So when I add those up, you can see what this grouping looks like here. Okay, so now for my green is going to kind of take the brunt of it all. But you can kind of notice they're located all along 40 here. So we do have some relative access here. So you can see that the, the difference between these is higher than our previous situation there, based solely on drive time. Okay, and then now you can see the 
east region for my two AA schools. So we have North Brunswick all the way up to Andrews, and then we have the kind of Hertford and Southwest Edgecombe kind of interspersed between this other quadrant right here. But now when I group them here, you can see all these purple schools are together, and then all these other brown schools are together. So you can see North Brunswick is still going to go all the way up to Andrews and Randleman and St. Paul's over here off of 95. But you can see the grouping here based on this drive time and the outlier that we talked about before. So some suggestions that I have for the future. One, the big one is here, I'm not a mathematician, I'm a GIS analyst, is that what's the best metric to create groups? Is it the average drive time? Is it the standard deviation? Is it the drive time times the standard deviation? Is it something else? The other big issue that we have are what are elegant methods to optimize drive time and create groups? Because I was able, using this brute force, I was able to do 16 by 16, but when I tried doing 32 by 32, just to determine what an east and west region might be, because this straight line might not be the best. We might need to draw these lines along um, transportation, like 95 or 40 or whatever. What's the best way to optimize these regions? 32 by 32 was impossible. So maybe an elegant method where if it got to some certain point, it would just get out of the, it would get out of the, um, get out of loop that we're running. And the other thing, what's the best way to test this? You know, is there an inferential method to test this? What's the optimum way to test this? I'm not really sure. And I'm always open to suggestions on something like this. If you have any questions, I could reach at 919-530-6575 or tmulroon at nccu.edu. This is a neat, really neat exercise in you know, data development applications of network analysts, and then kind of bringing in the statistical programming language R, which I'm somewhat familiar with, to kind of optimize this and figure out the, the best ways to do this. But obviously, there's more elegant ways to do this, and I look forward to hearing from someone that might have some suggestions. Thank you very much.